New reports indicate Kim Jong-un is going to great lengths to smuggle limousines and luxury goods into North Korea, even as he demands money to keep the bodies of his father and grandfather preserved. Brian Todd has been looking into this for us. So Brian, what are you learning? Well, if this is the kind of hypocrisy that seems to be the jet fuel of Kim's regime, we have new information tonight on Kim's desperate attempts to keep North Koreans worshiping at the feet of his dead father and grandfather. At the same time, he operates a secretive, elaborate smuggling operation to indulge his taste for opulence. They're a flamboyant symbol of Kim Jong-un's power, and critics say his unbridled greed. Bulletproof stretch limos made by Mercedes and Rolls-Royce, worth about $500,000 each. The North Korean dictator has tooled around Pyongyang in them, famously had flanks of security agents run alongside them, and even waved to the masses alongside China's president from the open top of one. The problem is, under U.N. sanctions, Kim's not supposed to have these luxury cars. He smuggles them in with an elaborate, secret bootleg operation, only to turn around and flaunt his apparent fleet of limos. North Korea's commercial facilitators overseas have global reach that stretches not only in Northeast Asia, but also to uh, places like Europe as well. The Center for Advanced Defense Studies and the New York Times tracked a secretive shipment of just two of these armored Mercedes limos to Pyongyang. They say the car's journey started in Rotterdam in the Netherlands in June of last year, sent in containers on a major shipping line. After a 41-day journey, the cars arrived in the port of Dalian, China. Then they went to Japan, then to Busan, South Korea. But there, a mysterious ghost ship, which the Times says was tied to a Russian businessman, picked up the limos. Once out to sea, according to the Times and the think tank, the ship vanished, probably turning off its required transponder. Based on their tracking of shipping records and satellite pictures, they believe the ghost ship took the limos to Vladivostok, Russia, where they say North Korean cargo planes likely picked them up and flew them to Pyongyang. They use sort of shady companies whose operations are not clear. They don't necessarily always report all of their commercial activities. They obfuscate the ownership of things like their vessels. What this means for law enforcement is it becomes exceedingly difficult to track some of these shipments. North Korea has been banned from importing luxury goods since 2006, but that hasn't stopped the regime from smuggling in items like high-end watches, yachts, cognac and other expensive liquor even ski lifts for the resort which only North Korean elites can use. At least $191 million worth from 2015 to 2017, according to the new study. But while that's going on, Kim apparently still says he needs donations from average North Koreans to pay for keeping his dead father's and grandfather's bodies frozen. Radio Free Asia, a news agency funded by the U.S. government, reports Kim has recently forced factory workers and others to donate money to pay for the expensive preservation of the bodies of Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung at the Palace of the Sun in Pyongyang, where they are displayed through glass for the North Korean people to worship and venerate them. Analysts say Kim may not be doing this because he lacks the cash, but because he wants his people to feel connected to his dynasty. It's a way of crowdfunding. Uh, by reaching out to uh, the party members, by reaching out to the people. Uh, it makes them invested in maintaining this uh, location, which is an important symbol for the Kim family. It makes them part and parcel of the, the story of the Kim family. It gives them a stake. But despite the Kim worship in North Korea, there could be some grumbling among North Koreans over the preservation of the leaders' bodies. Radio Free Asia, citing a source with knowledge of a ceremony where people were rewarded for donating to that cause, says some North Koreans are upset, saying it's ridiculous that authorities there are seemingly ignoring their livelihoods, even letting some people starve to death while trying to raise money to keep dead bodies from rotting.